Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be starting a new topic that is unit number 4 machine tools. So in the workshop practicals we had a discussion with the all machines parts, the basic function and the few operations performed on different machines. So here unit number 4 consists of different machines after manufacturing process how different operations can be performed this we are going to discuss. So here we will be discussing the three major machines and their operations. So lathe machine, second drilling machine and the third grinding principle. So that is we can say the grinding machines are not part of syllabus but we are discussing grinding operations. So lathe, lathe machine that is universal machine, drilling machine and the grinding operations. So we will start what is machine tools. So basic functions are explained which we had in discussion with unit number one. So first functions hold support and the guide of different machine tools. So here in lathe machine we know the workpiece is placed between the chuck or it is clamped by the chuck and it is rotated. The cutting tool which which is consists of hard material which cuts the soft material off as workpiece. Then it provides a motion to the workpiece or cutting tool or both of them. So we know that in case of lathe machine, the workpiece is placed or it is clamped in a chuck which is rotating. Whereas for drilling machine, the workpiece is clamped on the work table and the drilling drill bit is moving, it is rotating. The third one is as a function. It control or regulate the cutting speed and the fit between the workpiece and cutting tool. So we'll discuss all these things with the diagram. The machine tools are again classified as metal cutting machine tools and surface finishing machine tools. Out of which as discussed we have a syllabus of three machines, three parts, lathe machine, drilling machine and in the second type surface finishing grinding machine principles or operations. Milling machine and shaping machine not in the syllabus but for general knowledge it is placed here or different machine tools or metal cutting machines are milling and shaping. Whereas surface finishing machine tools are grinding. These second, third and fourth surface finishing machine tools are not in the syllabus. It is just to know different grinding or surface finishing operation as honing, polishing and the lapping process. So we'll start with the first part of unit number 4 that is lathe machine called as a center lathe or universal machine. It is the machine tool used for removing the undesirable material so we can see the metal cutting operations in the form of chips from cylindrical surface. So we are in case of lathe machine we use a cylindrical workpiece and the material is removed in the form of chips. The cutting tool is a harder material that is a carbide material is used as a cutting tool material. So of course the workpiece materials are MS as a very common material mild steel, low carbon steel. Carbide or tungsten carbides are common cutting tool materials. These all points are important to remember for MCQ. So basic a simple a block diagram of a lathe machine which consists of a different parts. So we will just discuss the function. This diagram is a sim actually a screenshot of one diagram which consists of a block diagram plus the function of every part. So here I will just focus with the function and the part name. Let us say we will start with part number 1 that is lathe bed. This lathe bed is, is used for as a support member. So it, its function is to support all other elements of lathe because on this bed whole machine is standing. So it is like similar to our leg. So I can say this function is to support all elements of lathe machine. Then second element very important is headstock. It is also called as live center. So headstock function is to support the spindle. This is 
spindle. The function of red stock is to support the spindle and to house main drive. Third part is opposite to this that is tail stock. This is head stock and this is line that is this part tail stock. This also called as dead center. The basic function of tail stock is this whole assembly as a tail stock. The basic function is to hold the dead center. So here we can place a drill bit and we can do the drilling operation. So it as mentioned function to hold the dead centers and to hold the tools like a drill rimmer. So we can do the drilling operation, rimming operation on the lathe. We can put this cutting tool here that is in tail stock. Another function if we have a long cylindrical object so it may vibrate during motion. So by using this dead center we can provide the support to this cylindrical object. Next one is this four pole object can be called as carriage. This whole structure can be called as a carriage. Again this carriage consists of different parts. We will see the function. To hold the cutting tool that is a basic function of this part called as a tool post. So the function of tool post is to hold the cutting tool. Then here we have these two wheels, larger wheel, one smaller wheel. This larger wheel provides motion to the carriage in this direction that is longitudinal movement parallel to the axis of workpiece. And this smaller wheel provides the cross feed. So hence the name it is given cross slide. Then we have this small part called as compound rest. It is used to give some angle which is used for taper turning operation. This part is chuck. C H U C K is chuck. The function of the chuck is to hold the workpiece. So I can place workpiece here which can be clamped by using this chuck. Next part is here as mentioned lead screw. The function of lead screw is to provide a mechanized motion to the carriage. So the carriage is moving here. So it provides mechanized motion to the carriage. Next part is feed drive. This one. It transmits the power from main drive to the lead screw. So from drive to this lead screw it transmits the power. So that is feed drive. So these are a few major parts of lathe machine which is required for MCQ point to understand the function of each element of lathe machine. So general part as summary lake or it is a bed, lathe bed supporting member of whole machine, head stock, live center, tail stock as a dead center. Very important heart of the important system is carriage which consists of saddle that larger wheel smaller wheel is a cross slide compound rest and tool post chuck the function of the chuck is to hold workpiece and the function of tool post to hold cutting tool as it is a center lathe center of live and dead center that is headstock and tail stock they should lie in the same plane so these are the functions summarized here. So we we'll again will discuss the functions slide after the operation slide. Next the specification of lathe machine. So if you want to purchase a lathe machine what are the different parameters that you should ask so that has the specifications. So normally here we will discuss basic parts are explained here with the previous diagram and the functions they are summarized starting from 1 to 5 part of the carriage. So here the first part of the carriage here as apron this first part 
now here we are discussing only the carriage exaggerated view so the carriage first part is apron as mentioned you can see here the motion parallel to the axis second is a saddle this wheel larger wheel which we have seen in the previous figure that saddle which slides along the guideways of lead bed here we have this lead bed which slides on the bed cross slide having a cross motion that is it provides a fade to the cutting tool compound rest this one is compound rest third one it is mounted on the cross slide and used for taper turning operation that we should remember we are using compound rest to give a tilt which is required for taper turning operation and the last one uppermost part of the carriage is tool post where cutting tool is placed to hold the cutting tool for different operations this is a basic thing now next slide we'll discuss about different lathe machine operations so let's go and discuss this part as specification of lathe so the lathe machines are specified with four different parameter first is overall length of lathe machine that we call as overall length of bed second is distance between the centers that is distance between the live center and dead center second point third one is a swing where swing is the maximum diameter of workpiece that can be machined so that actually swing indicates that is the swing is if it is 50 15 mm that indicates the 15 mm is the maximum diameter that we can machine on this particular machine lathe machine and the last important minimum and maximum spindle speed that we can see the spindle range the speed limit for spindle so these four parameters are important to remember for specification now different operations of lathe we'll discuss one by one as summarize your 12 operations turning different types of turning second facing operation then again grooving parting in the same category slight difference knurling is again not metal cutting operation and then the rest of the parts are some basics for drilling operation so yes we go with basics first turning operation it is also referred as straight turning or sometimes if there is a steps step turning so here we use a single point cutting tool you can observe here a goldish color cutting point is used as a single point cutting tool which is as a cutting tool for turning operation and facing operation then the motion parallel to the workpiece axis in this operation of for turning with the schematic diagram you can understand for the turning operation we are reducing the diameter and the cutting tool moves along the length of workpiece so the motion of the cutting tool is longitudinal it's a parallel to the workpiece and spindle axis how we can define turning is the process of removing the material from cylindrical workpiece to reduce diameter so that's very common sentence process of removing work workpiece material that is of course logical cylindrical workpiece what is function to reduce diameter so if it is a constant change in diameter that's straight turning next eccentric turning again slight change with the basic functions of turning operation here again we use a single point cutting tool everything is same the difference is motion of cutting tool is again parallel longitudinal in case of the eccentric turning operation the about two separate axes are rotations of workpiece are used so here you can observe the axis of workpiece and the axis of forger chuck that is against the machine axis it is different there is a eccentric difference between the two axes that of course that is possible only when we have four jaw chuck so for eccentric turning when the axis is not constant not same not collinear we use four jaw chuck to have two different axes for workpiece as well as jaw or that is for machine 
Next, another type of turning is taper turning. When we want to reduce the diameter, not with constant rate, not constant value from 40 mm to 30 mm along the constant length. When we want to reduce diameter gradually, uniformly along its length, then that operation is called as taper turning. So, movement of cutting tool is in the taper direction. We use a compound rest here. Then, at what angle we need to rotate the compound rest? That can be found by using this formula. Tan alpha is equal to D minus D upon 2L. Whereas, capital D is let's say 40 mm. Small d is let's say 30 mm. And 2L, that L is the length of workpiece. So, from highest diameter to the lowest diameter across the length, we can have this formula alpha. With this angle, we have to change or rotate the compound rest. Second operation, facing. Facing is completely opposite to the turning. Again, here we are using single point cutting tool. The motion is perpendicular to the axis of workpiece and the spindle which is given by using cross light that is a cross motion definition again same process of removing the material workpiece at end surface that is at, at the face to produce flat surface so very simple along the face material is removed that is facing operation next grooving operation for grooving the multi point cutting tool is used to create a groove on cylindrical object the motion of the cutting tool is perpendicular to the spindle axis that is by using cross light here the required shape is formed or reproduced on the workpiece by using multi point cutting tool that is grooving tool so you can observe different diagrams and this multi point cutting tool to provide a groove to create a groove on cylindrical workpiece Parting operation. Parting is similar to the grooving where again we have multi point cutting tool for parting operation. The motion again here is perpendicular to the spindle axis and it's given by using cross light. Definition of parting is it's cutting the workpiece in two parts. So we are parting the workpiece. So cutting the workpiece in two parts that's we can say parting and that's the difference between parting and grooving. Grooving is creating a small groove inside a cylindrical workpiece. Next very important operation which you might have seen a lot of application in day to day life that is knurling. So basically knurling is not metal cutting operation. In all previous operation we cut some part of workpiece. Here knurling tool is a multi point cutting tool where the some patterns are embossed on the workpiece. Again, the motion is cutting tool moment, that is a knurling tool moment is parallel, longitudinal to the axis and the shape is embossed by using cross light. The here diamond pattern, regular pattern is, pro, is impressed in case of embossing operation and why it is doing all this operation to provide non-slip grip and to reduce or to provide a proper friction when you are handling any components. So sometimes it gives aesthetics appearance that means a decorative look to the workpiece as well as it provide non-slip grip to the surface. So this is actual 3D diagram of knurling tool and schematic sketch. The fit direction and the depth is given. So fit is as the movement of cutting tool is parallel and the depth is given by using cross light. If the workpiece is large, we can provide the support by using tail stop. Next operation is chamfering. For it is again a multi point cutting tool similar where we need to chamfer the edges. Again, the why we are using the chamfering operation is because to avoid injuries and to enhance the look. So many times to avoid injury to the cylindrical and the sharp corner work pieces we do the chamfering operation by using multi point cutting tool. The motion is again same. The feed is a cross feed to chamfer the edges.
next drilling operation on lathe machine so we can do the drilling operation create a cylindrical hole in lathe machine possible where we need to place a drill bit twist drill bit inside a tail stock dead center which can be placed to create a hole in cylindrical objects the motion in case of drilling operations is by using tail stock so here you can observe in this diagram a drill bit is given a fed whereas workpiece is rotating which is placed inside the chuck we can do the rimming operation drilling operation and few operations similar to the drilling machine so that's the difference between drilling operation on drilling and lathe machine for lathe machine workpiece is rotating and the drill bit is given fed by using tail stock whereas for drilling machine drill bit is rotating inside the spindle and chuck while workpiece is stationary so you should remember that is the difference between drilling operation on on these two different machines same operation rimming operation it is used for cleaning and smooth out the surface of already drilled hole so rimming is multi point cutting tool this drilling is also multi point cutting tool so this is what all the operations on drilling machines means we can do the rimming operation and drilling operation on drilling machine but these two operation can be performed on lathe machine so that's a different operations performed on lathe machine in next lecture we'll discuss with another types that is drilling machine and their operations